Hey guys, welcome back to The Suicide of Rachel Foster, part four. We've been all over this hotel ghost hunting, and now we've just woken up in the chapel. Very mysterious. What's going on? Let's find out. Let's get out our little microphone. No, we can't. What are we doing here? This. We don't have our flashlight either. Why are we in this dark and creepy church? Still can't go out the front door. What's the point? What was that? Nothing. Guess we'll go back to the hotel through this passageway. Oh, here's all my stuff. Why was my stuff taken off me? Irving? Merry Christmas, Nikki. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> it's a little late for holiday greetings, but I expected that. What? Well, I, I thought you were calling to... Hey, is everything okay? Everything is not okay. Yes. I mean... I was stolen I, out of I don't my bed so. at no. night and put in what the chapel. I think... I sleepwalked. Like in the old Laurel and Hardy movies? Convenient. I'm serious. I, I woke up in church, standing in front of the lectern. Wow. Does that happen a lot? No. No! Uh, one doesn't just become a sleepwalker from one day to the next. It used to happen when I lived here. One time in February, I ended up outside. But no parent leaves the doors unlocked if their kid sleepwalks. I never told anyone. Sleepwalking episodes are common in children. That's not the point. I forgot all about it. Then I come back here and it happens again. If I ended up in that church, maybe there's a reason. Sometimes following your instinct is the best thing. So back yeah. to the church we go. I'll do that. Oh, uh... Irving? Yeah? I like that you call me Nikki. Merry Christmas. Mm-hmm. Merry Christmas, Nikki. See y'all in a moment. Uh, hi. Still uh, on I was my thinking way. There really could be a repressed reason as to why you ended up there. So you've come to the conclusion that I'm not crazy. Never thought that. Well, at least not in this case. Oh, fuck off. Hey, language sister Nicole. All right, all right. So, if I think about the church, I think about my mother. She often helped Reverend Foster. She decorated for holidays, did fundraising, and put up booths to involve the whole community in parish activities. You know, that kind of stuff. I know what you mean. I think she found gratification in doing that, something she didn't get elsewhere, including the hotel. When we moved to Portland, she quit. Fundraising? God. Mm. I gather you didn't exactly have a high opinion of your mother when you were a kid. Why not? Well, she was really busy with the hotel. I was always running after Leonard. He was much more fun than she was, no doubt about it. He was a philosopher capable of calculating the motion of celestial bodies while taking apart and refitting a motorcycle in less than half an hour. Mm -hmm. What about her? In the same half hour, she could have audited a business balance sheet. There so you, you go. thought she was too boring. Uh, a businesswoman. That's I mean, whatever. Mm, no. What I understood later, living in such proximity to her, is that Mom loved feeling needed. A religious community like ours makes you feel needed, without a doubt. I suppose. We're not done talking. Nikki? When there was a party, my mother always got out the usual streamers and decorations and stuff. She raced in and out of the church, but I never discovered where she kept all those things. Never asked? 
Oh, a million times. She didn't want to answer. She said they were in a safe place. A real mystery. <laughs> a place what in this little chapel where she keeps decorations. Been? Nothing explosive. It's just that I had the bad habit of sneaking all over the place and forgetting what time it was. There was that huge lady, the uh, assistant cook, Mrs. Bryce. She used to get so mad. <laughs> <laughs> a judicious girl. They promised to reveal the secret storeroom when I got older, but I must have forgotten. The mystery of the secret storeroom. Ooh, sounds good. The riddle! What are you talking about? Leonard was never good at keeping secrets, but he taught me a riddle to get there. Can you remember it? <laughs> Incredible. Yes. Oh, something like, down the stairs, watch your step, don't fall apart or it's your end, round a corner, turn around, there's your way in front of you, all that's closed can be open to if you see beyond its looks. But how can I remember it? How... it's... I... I... Wow. The laundry room? Total mystery. Wanna play? Uh, I... yes. I need to think about it. I have no idea what it means. I'll, I'll call you if anything comes to mind. Okay, let me go find this mystery room. Calm yourself. Don't talk hey, trash. What are you doing there? Don't know. I think you stayed on the line. Didn't notice. You think it's too horror? The church, the organ, the notes reverberating in the dark? It's been years since anyone played it. <sighs> My mother's heart would break to see it like this. She adored it. What was that? Well, you should take it with you to play it. I can't even Import see something here. I couldn't play even if I wanted to. I never learned. I don't think playing the organ is a crucial thing these days. <laughs> yeah, right. Tell that to my mom. Essential part of a woman's education, I must admit. Oh, poor mom. She had a daughter that would rather dig for gold at Hunter's Gudge till the cows came home. I can totally picture you. Uh-huh. Then there was Rachel, who reminded me how useless I was in music. Look how good Rachel is. Look how she puts her mind to it. She doesn't know how to read, but she's got a real ear for it. While I was considered the illiterate artist in the house, if Rachel had been around, she would have improvised Beethoven's Ninth. Was she so perfect? Yes. Apparently. I'm only just now realizing how jealous I was. Keep looking. Hey, I found this picture that I can't see. Can y'all see this? The paintings of the saints. I was convinced Leonard had gotten rid of them. Why? He liked saying that it was more likely to find God in a supernova than in a church. I don't see what he had in common with the Reverend Solomon Foster. They mostly talked for long stretches in between chess moves up in the attic. United by pawns and bishops, but divided by the saints. <laughs> divided by everything else, I'd say. Hmm. Okay, back to my hunt for that room. There's a butterfly. What is down here? Is this the secret place? What is this? No? Why am I not in? Go in. Let me in. Okay, I think I'm in now. Yes. Oh, secret tunnel. What secrets do you keep? Where's this? <gasps> Who 
Whose bedroom is this? There's a drawing of the organ, a telescope, windows that are... That's not a proper word. Oh, shit. So, found the mystery decorations? Is this the key? No, no. No decorations. Is everything okay? I found something. What? I... It's like someone built some kind of bedroom. Irving, you there? Uh, uh, Very course, creepy. Yeah. Uh, what bedroom? T tell me what you see. Rachel's okay. Book. I... Uh, there's some windows drawn on the walls. Books. Sheet music. A pink bed. It's like a kid's room. No way. This place doesn't make sense. No Need one would live down here. Nicole, Nikki, I think you should get out of there now. No, I need to look around. Wait, wait, wait. Like, there's got to be mean? an explanation. Okay, that's it. Uh, now I'm calling the head office in Billings. I'm telling them it's a code red emergency, so they'll have to... Jesus Christ, Irving. What? This is all Rachel's stuff. Understand? It's her room, a, a, a replica. Uh, you don't know that. Y you can't know what her room looked like. Everything here reminds me of her. Let me look around. I'm sure I'll find an explanation. But my other hand's on the red phone. Keep it there, but don't make the call. I need to figure out what's going on here. Most certainly. There's a retainer box. Did you get out of there? No. You know by any chance if Rachel wore a retainer? Uh, maybe. There was an article is saying they hadn't found it at the site of the suicide. I remember. She always made a horrible noise when she clipped it onto her palate with her tongue. What does Rachel's retainer have to do with anything? I found a box. It could be hers. Why should someone keep a ten-year-old retainer? Maybe they're not just keeping it. Maybe they're using it. The box is empty. No way. I, I can't... Let me go on. Can you hear me? Yes. We have to call someone. You have to get out of there right now. You can no, call someone, but I'm I staying. I found a key. It's from my old music box. The one in Leonard's room. I'm having a hard time following. If everything in here is Rachel's, then why is my music box's key here? Because this is your I room. I don't know and I don't want to know. Tell you what I think. Someone could have been in your room. Maybe this is where they used to lock you in when doesn't you, matter. you sleepwalk. How can you be so calm? If someone was in there, he's not here now. I need to grab the chance to figure out what the hell is going on, or went on. Why am I not able to acknowledge some of this stuff now? Yes. Nicole, listen. I already know what you're going to say, but please trust me. Get out of there. No. Please, you're not helping. You do realize you found the replica of a dead girl's bedroom. This is sick. This is a... a the a... more things get freaky, bizarre, and painful, the more I need to figure out why. Why all of this... We'll figure it out with the sheriff. Once you're out of there, into a safe hotel room in town. Please, just... Listen. A bunch of strange things happened since I got here. Think about it. Phone calls on a deadline. Old lipsticks that don't go bad. Leonard's notes where he says he saw a girl that's supposedly been dead for 10 years, and now this! What if he's just been kidnapping oh, good kids this to get whole time? Here. We both agree that saving your skin is top priority, right? I've looked over every inch of this place, and there's no one. If it's true, you realize what that means? What? What are you trying to tell me? Your father... He spent years in there. In total solitude. With the weight of his family and Rachel in his conscience. He he wasn't the kind of guy to just let the past slide with a shrug. You know that too. You're joking, right? You think he did this? Think about it. That room could be an act of love. Distorted, even morbid, but in his eyes, 
How dare you? My, how dare I? My be father offended. might have had a lot of weaknesses, but surely what you're saying. Leave out that he cheated on my mom. Leave out that he fell in love with a 16 year old, but f fucking hell, don't you dare even think that. Think I, what? He would never have built a fucking underground shrine for a dead person. How do you know? Your father had changed in the end. You didn't spend time with him, but I met him, and I'm telling you. No! I don't give a shit about what you have to say. I just want you to know that... If you don't want to help discover the truth, don't call me. Me, 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 me. Got a little pissy. I guess we can go out of here now. <sighs> Asshole. How dare you? You don't know shit. You don't know fuck. Oh, but I do. Uh-huh. Okay. Finally, a bit of peace and quiet. It'll help me clear my head without those incessant phone calls. I'm not a fucking switchboard, for fuck's sake. Some okay. feelings are hurt. Let me piece things together. I just found out there's a room dedicated to Rachel Foster in my father's hotel. Maybe with items from her real room. Holy Jesus, that's freaky. Is it? Some people think she didn't commit suicide, and some even think she's still alive. I have to think it through. What concrete clues did I find? First thing, the phone call. They said Rachel isn't dead. No, they then said she's the still there. The lipstick from ten years ago turns up, still good. And then, my father's various notes where he says he still sees her. If that were true, it might explain the sighting by her friend here in the Timberline. And now I find her retainer box, but no retainer. That room might not be a reconstruction. If Rachel didn't kill herself, Rachel could have lived here. But if she's still alive, why doesn't she tell her parents? Exactly. Unless they're all in cahoots. No suicide, no Timberline money. No, 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 I'm just being paranoid. And then there'd be no reason for her to live in a fucking underground replica of her room. My key in the middle of Rachel's stuff, is it a message? Where do I fit in? Well, we're gonna go look in that music box. Are you trying to out? tell me something, Dad? My music box with the hockey player. I don't think I have the guts to hear that tune again. But I must. And here is the music box. Let's see. Aha, it's a drawer. And the disgusting retainer. The 27th of December, 1983. The hockey finals at Missoula. Us against Cold Springs High. We won by sudden oh, death after not. a three-hour game, and I got the medal for the most number of face-offs won. According to the papers, that was the night Rachel killed herself. Coming home, Mom barely had the time to pull into the garage, that I was already racing up to you, waving the medal in your face, Daddy. I was so happy. But you had other things on your mind, right? And you and Mom started fighting. The voices getting louder. That long silence when she comes down the stairs with the suitcases and Mrs. Bryce tries to stop her. Mom's car stays here and we leave with my Uncle John's. I never found out what started that fight. Mom never wanted to talk about it. Are you trying to, Daddy? Hmm. Day nine, last day. Um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and end this part here. I was pretty sure this was gonna be the final part, but... Seeing as how so much has gone on in this episode and we're really about to get into some juicy stuff, I think it only fitting to make it a separate part so that it doesn't go on too long. So, hang in there. We're going to find out what's up. 
I'll see you in the next part. Goodbye. If you made it to the end, hit the like button for the algorithm, subscribe for more content, and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next video.